All right, we're back. This is Demetrius Wilson, uh, Chapter 8, Principles of Management. Uh, we're on visual, visual uh, elements of culture, and uh, we only have about uh, eight more slides left, so uh, you won't have to listen to me much longer. Uh, although numerous elements that define an organization's culture are, uh, are tacit and define uh, are difficult to define, culture does manifest itself in some visible aspects of the organization's environment. Here we illustrate five ways in which culture can show uh, shows itself uh, to observers and employees uh, within mission statements. That's a perfect example. Provides tangible declarations of purpose describing who the company is and what it does. Rituals, there are repetitive activities within a company uh, that have symbolic meaning to show uh, camaraderie. Uh, rules and policies determine acceptable and unacceptable behavior, and we spoke of that earlier. Uh, physical layout, such as the company's building and layout of employee offices and other workspaces, communicates important messages about company's culture. Uh, Lego, for example, utilizes a number of project rooms to inspire employees continually uh, to continually innovate and create. Uh, one thing about Lego that I, I found out that I had knew, n had not known because it's a Scandinavian country company, and so is Volvo. When I went to Legoland, and you know I was not very very you know alert because I took a long drive down to San Diego, and uh, I looked at the sign. The sign said, "If you have a Volvo, pull all the way to the front." So I have a Volvo, and I said. Ah, I was like, I know the sign doesn't say that, but because they're partnering and they're from the same country, you can actually, if you go to Legoland, you can take your Volvo and go all the way up and get prime time parking uh, without paying for reservations or anything like that. Found that pretty interesting. Uh, stories and language uh, that provide another way to identify organizations' culture. A uh, story of Apple's humble beginnings with Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak uh, creating their uh, personal computers inside Jobs' garage in uh, Los Altos, California. Uh, that epitomizes the open creative culture of innovation and experimentation that continues at Apple today, and that is so very true. All right, so let's put this back down. Uh, so, visual elements of culture. Uh, tradition is important at Mary Kay Cosmetics, and you see it all the time, even if you don't realize it. Uh, you might just say, hey, why does that lady have a pink Cadillac? Oh, this is why. Uh, pink Cadillacs are given to top performers at large annual events. When you see that pink Cadillac, you know that that individual is from Mary Kay. Uh, visual elements of culture, uh, physical layout is important at Google, like that uh, you know, dinosaur right there. Uh, Google promotes creativity and a fun atmosphere by enhancing their buildings with a vast array of visual stimuli. And there will be a, vis uh, there will be a video uh, of Googleplex. I want you to watch that and enjoy. And uh, then uh, you can determine and figure out how you're going to move up to Mountain View, California to go work for Google because you're going to see how nice it is. And it's basically everything that you need, everything that you could ever want. Uh, but the premise behind that is, just so you know, is that if they give you everything that you need, everything that you want, uh, if you fail at Google, we know that they know, you sh and you should know that the failure would be on you. Uh, some more lovely discussion questions such as, do you think it's a good idea for companies to emphasize person organization fit when hiring new employees? Uh, I think so. You need to have the right people in there. If you have the wrong people, it will show and it will cost the company money. Uh, we also have a video from uh, uh, Zappos and uh, I don't know if it shows in that video, but in another video I saw of, of Tony, the, the CEO, uh, I saw he, he talked about how many millions of dollars he spent on uh, you know, replacing people, recruiting new people, all that money spent because they made the wrong initial selection. Uh, you, you know, it's a, it's a battle of attrition. Like we talked about attrition earlier. You can't just say, oh, you know what? I've interviewed 50 people. I'm just going to take the best one out of that. No, find the right person. They're out there. And also, what advantages and disadvantages do you see when hiring people who fit with the company values? A lot more advantages than there are disadvantages, I'll tell you that much. Now, let's check this out. This is the process of cultural change. So, number one, you want to create a sense of urgency. And I noticed today, like, a lot of people just don't have a good sense of urgency. They don't have that, hey, I'm ready to go, uh, you know, mentality. Uh, two changed leaders and other key players, right? You need to change. You need to get a different type of person in there. I know the you know past few jobs I've had, I've always had to be. I've, I've come in and they say we specifically want somebody uh, that can can change things because you know we don't want to go with the status quo. A role model, uh, be somebody to be a role model or multiple people to be role models. Then you want to train individuals, change the reward system, create new stories and symbols, right? And then it continues to go. And instead of it being the vicious circle, it is the productive circle.
So more discussion questions. I know you say we can't ever get enough of those uh, and you love them so much. Uh, can new employees change a company's culture? If so, how? And they definitely can. It's tough, but you can. You can come in, be your own individual, stick to your guns, do what's right, and eventually the people who are going to change will change. The people who are never going to change will never change, and hopefully you can route them out of the organization. And so go over that discussion question and the other three as well. Uh, so developing your personal skills to learning and learning to fit in. So uh, I don't want to tell you to say fit into the company like, you know, don't be yourself, but fit in the company in terms of, of being an individual who who wants to be a part of that company's culture, especially if it is a good culture. Uh, do your research. Observe the physical environment. Right. You know, use your common sense to read between the lines. Right. And not, don't hold your hand up and say read between the lines. Not that funny joke. Uh, reflect on how you are treated. Ask questions, lots of questions, questions are good, and listen to your gut uh, or your spidey senses. They will lead you into the right uh, or down the right path. Uh, so, increase this. So, managing workplace impressions, right? The work required to attain a desirable job is substantial, but this hurdle is only the first step in the long career development process, right? That makes sense. You want to gather information. Uh, you want to manage your first impressions, right? So your first impression will probably be your last chance to make a, a first impression because people will always remember it. Uh, invest in relationship development. Seek feedback. It's always good to seek feedback. Sometimes people don't want feedback because they're going to hear negative things. Take those negative things. They're going to make you bigger, stronger, faster every time. Uh, show success early on, right? You want to show, show them what you can do. Show them that they didn't make a mistake hiring you and paying you all that money. Uh, to gain trust of your new manager and colleagues, you may want to uh, establish a history of success early, right? So I want you guys to go back, go to the um, uh, PowerPoint and read those in its entirety. Uh, but I just wanted to skim over it a little bit to give you a, you know, a, a brief glance at, at what they were referring to, which is all good stuff. So more lovely discussion questions. Uh, make sure I didn't skip a slide. I just sure didn't. Uh, so. What clue uh, does your college or school give about its culture, right? So think about the culture here. Uh, sometimes it's tougher in an online class, but think about cultures you've been around your high school, uh, different colleges and things of that nature. What are four things that you could do today to learn more about an organization you're interested in, right? Do your research. Uh, it's crazy when people go to jobs and they say, well, what do you know about the company? Nothing. You know, you got Google right at your fingertips. It's not like you have to go uh, to the Encyclopedia Britannica or the Microfish. Uh, some of you probably don't even know what that is at the library uh, so uh, so you know use your resources and don't go in there unprepared uh, imagine that your a good friend is starting a new job next week what recommendations would you give your friend to help him or her out to do a great job onboarding into the organization uh, so that is uh, slide 38 of 38 this has been chapter 8 this is uh, principles of management chapter 8 lecture part 2 uh, enjoy your day have a great week. You only have one test and not any quizzes, I believe, this week. But double check uh, the announcements and uh, that will lead you down the right path. As always, have a good day and a great week.